Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Echo Live mini mini sode brought to you by the Michigan Science Center. My name is Anna, and of course, coming to you from the Michigan Science Center's Echo Distance Learning Studio. I've got a pretty cool activity planned that I think ties pretty well to the amazing weather we've been having outside lately. Um, so we have had the really good luck of having some bright sunny days here in Michigan, or at least here in the city of Detroit where I live and work. Um, but I'm curious from you all, uh, maybe for our friends who are tuning in from other parts of the country um, or maybe even places outside the U.S. Tell me what the weather has been like where you live. Are you enjoying great weather like we are? Um, I know that I feel very lucky. It's been so awesome to get outside. And so I brought with me a really awesome experiment that has to do with UV light. UV light is that same type of light that is emitted from our favorite star, the sun. Um, so when you are outside on a bright sunny day like the one you see behind me in my virtual background and what I'm hoping it's like outside the Michigan Science Center right now, um, you are experiencing UV light. It's not light that we can see with our eyes. It's not visible light, which we've talked about on past episodes of Echo, um, but it is a different frequency of light that can have some interesting properties on various materials. So I have kind of a combination of a chemistry and an art project set up right here on the side of my table. I am creating what is known as cyanotype artwork. Um, or cyanotype prints, which was actually a process invented hundreds of years ago, long before there were cameras, um, digital cameras, like the ones we see in our cell phones, or even film cameras, the ones that came before that. So before we had devices like cameras, uh, scientists actually came up with ways that we could create images of objects that we find out in nature and in order to turn those into pictures or prints, which we could reproduce on a mass scale. So I have some cyanotype paper, some examples of artwork that I've made before, um, but I thought it would be fun to talk about one of the most notable scientists that is involved with cyanotyping. Um, you'll know exactly why I want to talk about her. Not only is she an awesome female scientist, um, but she is a fellow Anna. Um, so Anna Atkins is an awesome STEMinista well before her time. Um, Anna Atkins is actually credited with creating the first photo illustrated book. Um, these photos, though, were not like we said photos taken with a camera. Instead, they were created using this process of cyanotyping. Cyanotyping is a chemical process where certain pigments that are designed using two chemicals mainly derived of iron, and that iron will react with UV light. Again, that same type of light that we see um, coming from the sun. So like I said, I have the setup down here on my tray. So let me go ahead and switch my camera over and stop my screen. And you'll see down here on the table, um, I have a light being shown down onto some special paper. This is that cyanotyping paper, that type of paper that is coated with these pigments which will react to UV light. So about 30 minutes ago, but while I was getting set up for today's Echo Live episode, I actually laid out some various objects down here on top of the paper. Now, the lamp that I'm using is not just a regular lamp, like the ones that you might have in your school or your classroom right now. This has a special light bulb in it that emits UV or ultraviolet light. By placing these objects down on top of the paper, they are casting a shadow. Just like a shadow that you would cast outside, those objects are actually protecting the pigments on our cyanotype paper from being exposed to the UV light in the lamp. Now, for hundreds of years, scientists were able to do this using the sunlight from outside, and that actually helped scientists to catalog various things like plants um, or even small organisms like organisms or animals from the ocean. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take my objects off my paper here. And you'll notice that right now we don't see much. We see maybe some very lightly casted shadows um, where the paper has been exposed or not exposed to that UV light. But now what we want to do is stop that activation process. Now that we are done exposing our cyanotype paper to the UV lamp, now I just need to stop that process by soaking it in some water. So if I take my cyanotype paper here and I gently dunk it down 
inside my water, this water is actually going to stop that cyanotyping process. We wanna rinse it until most of the pigments kind of come off our paper here, making sure we're getting all of that pigment to stop reacting. And of course my green screen is going to interfere here. Let's go ahead and turn that off just for the time being. But when we turn it off, we'll see that my final product has pretty well captured the objects that I laid down on top of the page. Um, so here's one type or color of cyanotype paper. That one was green, um, but I have a different type of cyanotype paper. This one is more similar to the type of paper that Anna Atkins was using um, about 200 years ago when she was creating the first ever photo illustrated book. Um, and this one is more of a blue shade. Um, so if I swirl this one around, swish it back and forth, remember I am deactivating that chemical process that is taking place on the pigments on that paper. And when I take it out, it is a beautiful blue and white design. And on this one, you can see that I have both my um, leaves here, but also my safety glasses. So you can actually purchase cyanotyping paper online. So if you would like to create your own cyanotype artwork, now that it's getting nice and sunny outside, you don't even need a UV lamp like the one I've been using. You can actually use the sunlight outside. If you purchase some of that, again, all you need to do is set up your experiment by taking your cyanotype paper out of the bag. And you'll notice it comes in this nice black bag, which is going to protect the paper from the UV light in this room and the UV light that you would see outside. Remember that you always want to keep this bag closed um, unless you are using it just so that none of that UV light gets inside. If I switch my camera back over here, go ahead. So we can see kind of our setup down here on the table. Um, right now, the entire sheet is this nice dark blue, but we'll go ahead and we'll lay those objects back down on top. You could go outside and collect things like leaves um, or small rocks, twigs. I have a peacock feather that I actually got from the Pittsburgh Aviary, the National Aviary in Pittsburgh. If you ever have a chance to go, they actually gave me this peacock feather. So that was pretty cool. So now that I have it kind of arranged in the shape that I'd like, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my UV light there. Um, and this needs to sit to have that pigment be activated by the UV light for anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes. So this is a great thing to set up, um, leave there to absorb that UV light, and then come back and deactivate it over time. Um, I have a couple examples of ones that I created earlier. Um, so. I have ones that I left out for various amounts of time. So this one, for example, let's see if I switch my camera back over again. I didn't leave under the light for very long. And you can see that it didn't have much of a chance to be activated by that UV light, only very slightly. Um, this one was under the lamp for a, a little bit less than 10 minutes. Whereas the one that you just saw me deactivate with my safety glasses on it, this one was left under the lamp for about 30 minutes. Um, so the longer you leave it, the more chances those chemicals have to be exposed to the UV light. And then they just deactivate them by putting them in water and they'll stay this way forever. So they're not going to change now. They'll now be this color forever. And you have some nice artwork that you can hang up on your walls. So if you have any questions about cyanotyping, feel free to let me know in the chat. I have a couple exciting announcements about things going on here at the Michigan Science Center before we sign off today. First things, on Earth Day, Michigan Science Center is hosting a Scopes in the Skit City night sky viewing event. What this means is that if you stop by my side this evening on Earth Day, April 22nd, you can actually have the chance to use our telescope collection to take a look at various objects around the city um, or up in the nighttime sky. This event, of course, it is free. You can find a link to register for your spot on our website, and I'll also be posting the link in the description for this video. Um, so if you are in the area or able to come down after school that evening, it is going to be so much fun. I will be here and I would be happy to show you how to use our telescopes to take a look at the things that are up in the nighttime sky. Now, a little bit later on this year, we are also hosting summer camps. So if you are looking for something to do this summer, we are hosting eight weeks of in-person summer camps here at the Michigan Science Center. We are 
um, being very careful to make sure we are doing so safely. You can find information about how to register and our safety procedures that we'll be using on our website. It's listed right there on the bottom. Registration is open now, so go ahead, sign up um, for your spot if you're interested in joining us this summer because spaces are extremely limited this year. So definitely we hope you will visit us this summer um, or even better, you might sign up to be a part of our MySci Spark summer camps. All right, that is just about all we have time for today. Um, again, if you are interested in learning more about Anna Atkins or any of the other STEMinistas that we love to celebrate here at the Michigan Science Center, visit our website, follow the STEMinista project on Facebook and Instagram, and we've got all sorts of resources for you to use. So with that, I'll see you back here next Wednesday at 2.30 for another episode of Echo Live. Have a great day and enjoy.